everyone and welcome Hi. back to more mysterious recipes with me and her. And today we are making another request. This one is from the Silent Spy and we do definitely give big credit to that game for being one of the ones where you have like a whole selection of food that you can look at and drool over and choose from. And also just being a good spy. A million things to try. Yes, like, that too. Spying is always fun. But today we are going to be making the scotch pie from Silent Spy, which kind of rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> All right, where is it in this thing? So, so last night she went ahead and made our pastries so they could chill. Mm -hmm. And we will be uh, including the recipe for the pastry. If you don't want to make it from scratch, you can try just um, buying some pre-made pastry crust and fitting that into your oven safe container. So the pastry is really easy. We have these oven safe containers here. There are two cup containers, glass, oven safe, and one batch of the pastry made three of these. We made enough for three of those. They're a little bit bigger than what most of the scotch pie recipes that I was looking at online we're making but they're still like individual size so i think that's going to be a good amount and here's the recipe for the actual scotch pie which again will be down in the description box below so last night all i shot kitchen was a disaster and my overhead lighting was not great so all all i shot last night was overhead angle for the pastry for that what you're going to do is you're going to use two cups of flour Mix that with half a teaspoon of salt. And then bring half a cup of water with half a cup of lard or shortening to a simmer on the stove so the shortening or lard is all the way melted. and then stir that into your flour mixture until it forms a dough. Just knead that for about 30 seconds to a minute so that it gets smooth. And then once you have your dough, you're gonna divide that into workable size portions so that it doesn't start cooling down and hardening and drying out while you're working on it. If you're doing one big pie, okay, great. You can roll everything out, the, out at once. If you're doing individual ones like this, what we're using today, these containers, I divided it into three equal portions. And the two portions that we're not using, I left that in the pot that I heated the water with with a lid on, so off of the Evo, so it stays warm, stays soft, stays malleable. and then roll out that other with plenty of flour. You're gonna see from the overhead footage, that first one that I did, I did not have enough flour on the counter and when I finished rolling out my dough and I went to pick it up, it was sticking to the counter. I was not able to pick it up. I had to rework it. So don't be afraid to have a fair amount of flour on the counter when you're rolling that out because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get it up.
and then just kind of pat it into your pan. But first, one thing you're also gonna see overhead is we sprayed down the baking dish and put a small piece of parchment paper in the bottom before we press in the pastry. So that's gonna help these pop out nicely in one whole pie when it's done baking rather than having to like eat it out of the dish. So that's gonna give us more of what we're going for there. cut off any excess at the top. And then take the little bit of extra dough that you have from rolling out each one, roll that out flat, and you're going to want to cut a piece that is a little bit smaller than the top of your dish because you aren't going to be pinching the edges together you're going to be laying that piece on top of your filling it's going to be kind of resting there so you need it a little bit smaller than your dish And then when <coughs> your dishes are made, your tops are done, layer those top pieces of pastry with some parchment paper or plastic wrap, something to keep it separated. I'll be put sure it in the fridge. Let you talk. Put it in the fridge for at least an hour, but preferably up to 24 hours to help everything really set up nicely. We're also not going to fill these all the way to the top. There should be a little bit of a lip between the top rim and the surface of the pie, partly so that you can put your goodies on top of whatever you want to top these with. So when I was research, I say researching as if when that, I was researching, when I was like watching a, all a these story. different reading and watching all these different recipes. The two most popular topping ways that I kept coming across were to put either baked beans over the top and that, that little lip of the extra dough is going to create like a little bit of a rim to help hold that in place. She's saying no. UK baked beans are not the same as American baked beans. American baked beans sound like they're generally a lot sweeter, but people were in mostly agreement and comments in these debates that the Heinz pork and beans are a pretty good substitute and that if you can't get Heinz, the Van Camp's pork and beans, which is substitute. what we have. The Heinz aren't a substitute. That's what they like. Well, what you can get your hands on in the States. And if you we could not are not Heinz. in the States and you have any personal experience or you, you're in the States but you've got personal experience, comment down below. Let us know what is your favorite brand to use. 
what you and your family like best or so on but okay yeah so baked beans is one of the popular toppings and another the other most popular topping that i saw a lot they were saying you can do whatever sauce you want but the most popular sauce for the other most popular topping that i was seeing is brown sauce which specifically if you're really going to be authentic you want to get hp brand brown sauce from everyone that i was seeing and very strong debate over this but the hp brown oh. sauce sounds like it is the fan favorite however that's not something we're getting our hands on without ordering it and we didn't really have the time to do all of that what are you doing she's running away to grab a cat he was chasing his tail so without taking the time and a trip out of town to get the ingredients we need to make our own brown sauce which wasn't going to happen this week whoa i was reading up on what different things that we can use instead of brown sauce are what are good substitutes again aware this isn't going to be 100 percent authentic but trying to figure out what the best substitute that we can use with what we have here and now and some people were saying steak sauce people were in pretty much agreement that the a1 steak sauce is generally going to be the best thing to use there but they're also saying that's going to be a bit stronger than what you need so you can use a1 steak sauce or whatever your favorite sauce is or what we're going to try doing another thing that i was seeing was people saying that you can kind of mimic the brown sauce by doing equal amounts of ketchup and worcestershire sauce so what we're gonna do to kind of like mash these all together, again, aware this is not going to be 100% accurate, but trying to do the best with what we have here and now, we're going to be putting about equal amounts of A1 steak sauce with ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna stir that up and that's going to be our stand-in, again, stand-in for brown sauce, but it should be pretty tasty and I fully expect to enjoy it. We are on to the filling now. So we're, going to be taking one good sized onion here and we're just going to cut that up nicely and put it in this pan and in the meantime we have the oven preheating to 350 degrees We're gonna put this on the stove over about medium heat. Do we need with, any oil in there? Yeah, let's add just a splash of oil so it doesn't stick. And we're gonna cook this until it gets soft. So now we're gonna dance, 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 dance with our coffee in our mug. Once the onion is soft, we're going to add just a couple of spices. The most common seasonings that I was seeing looking at a bunch of different recipes is going to be marjoram and also mace or nutmeg. So mace and nutmeg are going to be from the same spice family. They're both from the from the nutmeg tree. I can't do you want the today. other herbs too or are we just doing marjoram? Um, do you want basil and oregano? I mean, I think it'd be the more herbs the better in my personal opinion. So that I was waiting to ask you because most of the recipes just use marjoram for the herb. Some of the ones I was looking Some of the at, recipes though. use a combination of different spices such as marjoram, um, rosemary, basil, and oregano. I so that's kind of up to you and your personal taste whether you're trying to make it like more like the, the basic scotch pie or more to your personal taste what you want to do there. I personally like flavor. She personally likes flavor. Now I know that's against the so we're going to protocol. Do a <laughs> I don't know, that brown sauce sounds pretty flavorful, <laughs> just for the record. I say the more herbs the better. I meant to check the store while I was grabbing a couple things this morning and see if they had mace. I forgot to. So since they are both from the same plant, we're going to be using nutmeg. But what's again. the difference? But they're both from the nutmeg tree, so the pit of the fruit that grows on the nutmeg tree is what you have as nutmeg and what covers the seeds of the fruit is what is mace. I think you may have got a so mace 
has a, well actually it's saying that mace has a more intense flavor than nutmeg. It's going to be a little bit more spicy, actually kind of similar to black pepper, which we're going to be adding some pepper to, but they're both similar flavors. So we're going to be working with nutmeg today. The onion is starting to soften up nicely. Christmas time is here. So time for lunch. Now that the onion is starting to soften, we are going to add our seasonings to that and let it cook for another minute or two. That, that overhead angle on. We're gonna be putting about a teaspoon and a half of our herbs. So you can use just marjoram or you can use a blend, but we're gonna do about, and you're doing salt, you're jumping right into that. So we're gonna do about a half teaspoon of salt. And also about the same amount of pepper and we're gonna use fresh ground pepper just because we like the flavor a lot better. A teaspoon and a half of marjoram or some assorted herbs. And then about three quarters of a teaspoon of nutmeg or mace. We're gonna let that go for just another minute. And then we're gonna take that off the heat. We'll let that cool down for just a minute or two because we don't want our meat to start cooking while we're mixing everything together. So we're just gonna let that cool for just a minute. And we're also gonna need a little bit of liquid added to this. And the recipes are pretty much in agreement that you can use either gravy or broth. Fit. We're gonna be using some beef broth. Oh, that's okay. I was hoping we were gonna use bacon dripping. Right now we're just going to add a third of a cup. And we want this to be a little bit more wet, but we don't want it to be soup because that's going to make our pastries really soggy. And I'm adding it after we take it off the heat to just kind of cool it down a little bit faster so that we don't cook that meat just yet. And now for your meat, we're going to be using half a cup of ground meat you can use ground meat minced meat and you can use based on your preference you can use either beef or lamb lamb is gonna have a stronger flavor it's also generally gonna be a little bit more expensive for today we're gonna be doing a half and half mixture of lamb but I feel like this is a recipe we're gonna make multiple half and times half mixture of lamb and beef yeah sorry half and half of lamb and beef so half pound of each but I feel like this is a recipe that we're probably gonna make multiple times because especially like the dog's eye meat pie. Granted, it's gonna be a different flavor. Amazing. But we have made that multiple times. That has definitely been one of our favorites. We've made that a bunch of times. So I feel like this is something we're gonna make multiple times and moving forward, we're probably just gonna use ground beef a lot because that's what we should really Ooh. have on the end. But for today, I can smell the good. nutmeg. Anyway, I need to get smells. It smells very uh, holiday -esque. It's defrosted a little, that's why it's discolored around the edges. It's okay. Um, the store did not have any out on the counter, so I she had to ask. So, no, well, yeah, I defrosted it in the microwave. I had to ask someone to go check the back and see if they had any because I really wanted to put some lamb in there because I know it's going to have a stronger flavor. That's not always a good thing. I'm a little on the edge about the lamb because I've had I've had good lamb. I also had very strong and. So if you if you want a more mild flavor, then Tasty lamb. just go ahead and use straight ground beef. We're just gonna mix those in with the onion mixture. Give me a pie. So we're gonna divide. Let's go for dividing it equally between these three. I think it's gonna be the right amount. We, so make sure that we don't fill these all the way up. We don't wanna go more than to about a half inch to three quarters of an inch from the top because we need a little space at the top. Yeah. 
amount. That's pretty much perfect amount. But let's try to just pat. <laughs> That's my padding. Lovely. Screen. Be good now. All right, and then we're just gonna pop these little pastry lids on there. Not really crimping the, nope. the edges of these. We're just gonna rest it on the top there. I think I made some of these a little bit smaller than they needed to be, but oh well, it'll be good. So we're gonna put these in the oven. Again, it's been preheated to 350 degrees. And we're gonna let that go for about 35 to 40 minutes to make sure these are cooked through all the way. Get out of my way! We will be back shortly. We are going to go ahead and make our sauce while our pies are baking in the oven. And just again, she already said, it's just gonna be one part, one part, one part of the three So we're not sauce. gonna bother using measuring spoons. We're just gonna eyeball everything into this bowl, stir it up and let it sit and blend while everything's cooking. First, we're gonna do some A1 sauce. I don't think we're gonna need a whole lot of this and we can mix up more then, later if we need However to. you say it, I say Worcestershire. Worcestershire. We're gonna do another part some of Some of that. whatever that stuff is. The only correct way to say it, not catsup. It smells like meatloaf. Mm hmm Like you which know is the meatloaf it's... sauce that yeah, you Yeah, which is why I'm on. saying that I think I'm really gonna like the sauce. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. We just popped this out of the oven and out of its bowl. We did realize we forgot one step before we put it in the oven, which is we were supposed to brush some milk across the crust before baking it. But we forgot that. Oh well, still looks good. Basically bake it till the meat's cooked through and your crust has started to turn gold. We're gonna put a little bit of we're sauce. We're gonna try this with the sauce yes. on top. I'm gonna put more than that, honestly, if you want to. I don't know if we like it yet. Taste test time. Ooh, that smells, smells good. Yeah, it smells great. It definitely would need a thicker crust to hold it together and pick it up and eat it. Like a sandwich. Yeah. I can definitely smell the lamb. Yeah, I can smell the lamb. I'm scared. The nutmeg mm -hmm. definitely isn't too strong. I wasn't sure how strong it was going to be. It does have a lamb taste, mm -hmm. but not super strong. She's making an expression. I want a little more sauce so I, because I can't really taste what I've got so far. It hasn't had much sauce on it to taste it. I'm not a fan of the lamb taste. So if, if I was just doing my own personal, not as authentic as possible, I would just do ground beef. But some people love lamb. I like lamb. I do not. As long as it's done fine. I don't like the, the uh, aroma flavor. You can taste the sheep <laughs> in the field. Are you okay, my dear? I don't want to taste the sheep. Okay. So if we make this again with just ground beef, I think taking, it would be taking the lamb flavor out of the equation, how do you feel about it? I mean, it's pretty simple. I feel like you can't go wrong with a ground beef pie. It's like a pot pie, just with less mm -hmm. vegetables. The, I feel like the seasoning is good. I feel like it's the right amount of herbs. The sauce is really good with it too. The herb flavor is definitely very light. So you could uh, add more herbs if you wanted a stronger flavor. <laughs> I can taste the sheep, it's all I can taste. For the record, the lamb flavor is not that strong. I'm this very, the fact very- that you can taste that there is lamb in it. I'm very picky about lamb. You gotta kinda kill the it. The lamb flavor is actually fairly light in this. 
If the I, have the only have. time I've had lamb that I like is when you couldn't taste the sheepiness of it. Like it was full of flavor. And this does not, I mean the herbs, like I said, it is a good amount of herbs for just a basic ground meat pie, but it's not enough to mask the flavor of the lamb. But don't worry, if you don't hate the flavor of lamb, you're not gonna mind the flavor of it here. I underestimated how much you hate lamb. I told you I did, you just didn't believe me. I didn't realize you hated it to this extent. So, I mean, the flavor is definitely very simple on its own. It's very much like a carrier for whatever you wanna put on top. <coughs> so, base recipe as is without anything added. I mean, Maybe like a four, cause there's nothing to not like about it unless you just despise lamb but it is lamb, a pretty lamb. minimal unless you despise lamb it's a pretty minimal flavor so yeah it does need a little bit of something on top such as the sauce or some ketchup the sauce is really good i like that or, sauce mm -hmm. so things that would change next time first of all in my attempt to make the um top piece of crust smaller than the container i made it a little too small and it shrunk a little bit more I would probably just make the crust, the top piece, the same size as the dish next time. Just lay it on top and let it shrink a little bit. I mean, honestly, you probably, you could crimp them together if you're adding a steam hole, which we were not because we were trying to avoid cutting a hole in the top because it doesn't show that in the picture. Um, I would make sure to brush it with some milk next time because we forgot that altogether, but I mean, it didn't make a big difference for getting it. And then I would also make the crust a little bit thicker in general next time so that it would all hold together a bit more and I could just kind of pick it up and bite it. I think those are the main things that I would change next time. And I would be curious about trying some different toppings because the sauce is good, but I feel like you could do so many different toppings. Mm -hmm. And then of course, next time you would change the meat filling to just a ground beef. Mm -hmm. But I can see we're very polarized about it. Polarized about it. Polarized. I'm doing my food dance and you're like, <laughs> we are just very polar opposites about the the meat, the meat itself. All right, well, that is Thoughts. all for today. You're doing the splits? I'm trying, I'm not doing very well. <laughs> Help me up. Oh! My socks are slippery. Since I am finishing this one mostly by myself, um, I'm not gonna try the baked beans over top of this one because that's gonna be too much food having to. But, I think if you point. are a fan of lamb, I think you will like this a lot. And you can do just lamb as well. You don't have to add the ground yeah, beef. Yeah, you can do just really lamb, like you can it. do just beef. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get somewhere in between the two on flavor wise. But it's definitely a very warm, cozy, like it's very mm -hmm. cold outside. I think it's perfect for that type of weather. It's definitely a little warm, cozy meal. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And until next time, we will see you later. Until next time. Bye. Guys. Mystery time. There's a mystery. Let us eat.